Well, it's a very, very, very cool surprise. And the reason why is, firstly, it's one of my favorite leopards in this whole area, Tumba, that is sitting ever so elegantly scratching his back and having a really kind of chill time of it. But he's not on his own this afternoon. I believe that Tingana is also here, and apparently there was also a third leopard. Now, no one can tell me where the third leopard went, but there's definitely Tumba and Tingana lying next to each other, and there is a carcass involved here as well. Now, apparently Tumba has actually arrived here with Tingana on the carcass already, so it's not like Tingana has stolen it from Tumba. It seems as though Sun is almost trying to steal from Dad at this stage, so it's very, very cool that we don't have just one. We have two to break our little leopard drought that we've been having, and to have far Father and son is always very, very special. It's a weird relationship that Tingana's got with his two boys in this area. So in terms of having, you know, Hosanna and Tumba around, Tingana seems so tolerant of these two, far more tolerant than I ever, ever thought that he would be. It really is quite amazing to me to think that these guys are as tolerant, well, this guy is as tolerant as he is, particularly because Tumba and Hosanna have left their moms ages ago and are both becoming quite big leopards now. They're not exactly tiny, small individuals. They're starting to get nice and big now. And so I'm surprised that Tingana is as tolerant as he has been with them over the past little bit. Now, Tingana is lying on the other side of a very dense thicket. Tumba, you can see, has gone to sleep now. And so what I want to try and do is just try and get round and try and get a better view. And hopefully we can see both of them. So I'm just going to do a bit of repositioning because another vehicle just left, which was on the other side. And that's why I parked here for now. But because that vehicle has just left, let's try and go around and see if we can get a better view of both of them, which is very, very cool. So super excited that they're both here. Apparently they were out in the open. And so hopefully they will come out into the open. And apparently Tumba was just following Tingana around and Tingana was just ambling with Tumba, kind of walking behind him, as father and son would do, I suppose. It's pretty ridiculous when you think about it, because very few leopards, like I say, are this tolerant of their sons when they've left their moms. So it's very, very cool to see, and hopefully we'll have an epic afternoon with these guys together. But let me just try and get myself into a better position and try and see if we can maybe see both of them. It's not a really nice place that Tingana is lying, so apparently he's lying in a bit of a thicket down below, which is okay, we'll try and figure it out, and I'm sure with a bit of time we'll be able to work it out and be able to get ourselves into really nice positions that we can see both of our beautiful cats, and hopefully they'll come together again at some point. But let's see now, I believe Tingana is just down in the drainage on the right-hand side here, so we're going to try and go forward a little bit. So, Rhonda, you're wondering about whether or not the other third leopard could have been Hosanna. I suppose it's possible. Hosanna hasn't been seen the last couple of days. He's been kind of moving around. Oh, there I can see him now. Um, Ferg, I think if we go forward, we're going to have a better view of him. Let me just keep going. I don't want to disturb Tumba, but I can see Tingana back of his head, and it's really obscured for Fergus. Just careful, your head's here. Yeah, nice and sharp thorns. Tumbo, are you going to stay still for me, boy? It's going to make my life a little bit more difficult, but can you see there, Ferg? There we go. So there's Tingana with his kill, and it looks like I'm afraid, Ali, to tell you that this is one of the baby waterbuck that has been killed. So I don't know if it is 100% a baby waterbuck, but it very much looks like one of the baby waterbuck has been taken by Tingana. And that does not surprise me at all, because Tingana has always been a very good hunter, of waterbuck. He's often been found in this area with waterbuck. Is it a waterbuck? Can you see there, Fergus? Is there... It looks waterbucky. Hang on a second. That fur... Is it just me or does that fur look spotty? Is it a hyena that he's got? It looks like a hyena that he's got there. That's spotted fur. I hope it's not a leopard that he's busy eating. That's very weird. I can't see what it is, to be honest, but that fur looks spotty to me. It's not a leopard spot pattern, which is at least some sort of good thing, but I don't know. Maybe it's just the fact that the fur is all wet, but it definitely looks spotted to me. What do you think, Ferg? Hyena? Looks like a hyena. I don't know if, Kirst, what do you think? You've got a bigger screen than what we do. It looks very hyena-ish in my point of view and opinion. It 
so it does have mottled colored fur. Hmm. I don't know what else it could be. I'll try and reposition just now and get a really kind of a better view of what's going on. Unfortunately, where Tumba's lying is making it difficult, but just the way it's... its de Exactly, it's definitely not a baby waterbuck. I just hope that that is not a leopard that is lying there that is being eaten by Tingana. It doesn't look leopard-like to me. It looks hyena-ish. I wonder if he didn't find a hyena, a youngish hyena. Oof, I don't know. Difficult to say what it is. We'll definitely try and get a bit more of a view and try and kind of position ourselves where we can get a little bit more of an angle. Hopefully, Tingana will pick it up at some point and move it and put it up into a tree or something like that, and we can actually get a really good look as to what he's got. But he must have killed this. Like I say, Ting Tumba was seen far from this area um, this morning. He was seen up on Torchwood, so he's walked a long way during the day today to get to this area. And so, you know, the fact that Tingana is not really even growling at Tumba would mean that I doubt that that is a leopard, unless... You know, of course, he could have gotten hold of one of our other leopards around. Maybe, you know, Sabui's cubs or Sabui was seen, on, I think, on Arethusa today, of all places, which is quite weird. So, I don't know. I mean, a very difficult thing to work out. But it looks hyena-ish to me, which is very strange. For Tingana to go after a hyena is seriously crazy. I thought he had, like I say, a little waterbuck or something like that. The guys weren't sure. They just said he's got a kill. But I didn't expect us to find a spotted kill inside there, which is really, really weird. Now, Tumba is actually lying just in front here. There he is, over there. So I'm actually in the way of Tumba. But that's where Tumba is sitting. And you can see Tumba is completely rest relaxed. There is no sign of anything inside his belly. So that means that he hasn't actually fed on this carcass. It means Tingana is the one that killed this and has been feeding off it. Now, as much as we want Tingana to eat, we do not want him to eat other predators, <laughs> especially not if it is anything that is like a leopard. Now, Tingana, I see, is up and kind of standing, so let's see what he does. Alan girl, not particularly, I don't think. I don't think a hyena is really high up on their food items, but when you're an old male that's a little skinny and food's hard to come by, I suppose anything is possible. We know Mvula went after odd fox and porcupines and you know i've seen salaj going after cane rats and so you never know with a leopard there's so much on their on their sort of diet that you can't really tell exactly what they like or what they don't like but i have a feeling that this is more either an opportunity situation or it's a situation where there was an injured animal that Tingana kind of grabbed and, and now he's just feeding off that fact. Or he's trying to defend himself and he managed to kill it and now he's feeding off it. But this must have been a serious racket that must have been made. If it's a hyena, that hyena would have made a lot of noise. It wouldn't have been a quiet situation at all. Very strange though. But you see Tingana, I think he's looking around trying to see where Tumba is. I think that's what he's busy doing at the moment because he's shot up. And he's kind of looking around. Maybe it's because there it was a report of a third leopard around. Maybe that other leopard is coming from there. But there goes Tingana. You can see looking as big and burly as he's looked in a long time. It's almost like he's starting to get back a bit of his shape, isn't it? That stomach is absolutely massively bloated at the moment. So what, he's had a really good feed on whatever this carcass is. And he's seriously gone to town and made himself nice and full, which is... Good for, for Tingana, it means that he is at least getting nutrients, whether it be Aina or anything else, is not really the point, as long as he's actually getting some food, makes most sense. Right, now I'm going to sit here for a while, and I'm going to see what exactly is going on. While I do that, let's send you back across to Ali, who's looking at all the smaller things. Well, Tumba is up and moving and coming towards that big chunk of meat that is being closely guarded by a very large male leopard. So it is a warm, warm welcome to Legacy Elementary that is joining us this afternoon for our school drive. I hope that you're having the best day at school and that you are going to love every little bit of joining us for this afternoon. My name is Tristan. On camera today I've got Fergus and this is interactive which means that you guys are watching us live. We are doing this right now which means that you can also ask questions and so just give your questions to your teacher and your teacher will send the questions through to us and we'll try and answer as many of your questions as possible. But this is the best way to start a drive with you guys because 
because the leopard is the shyest and most reclusive of all the animals. And so finding a big male on a water buck kill like this is absolutely amazing. Now, just now, we weren't sure if this kill was a water buck or if it was a hyena because it had a little spotted pattern on it. But it is indeed a baby water buck. That is what it is. You can see the head just behind the male's shoulders there in its ear. So that is a young kind of antelope that we get in this area, very similar to a deer about a little bit bigger than a deer and that's a little baby that was probably born in the last little bit and this male leopard who's one of our older male leopards he's about 12 years old he's very good at hunting baby waterbuck and so he managed to bring down this baby waterbuck but it's not just him on his own just now you would have heard me mentioning the word tumba now tumba is a young male leopard that is this male's Sun. So Tumba is in the bush behind the male leopard, and what he's doing is he's coming in to maybe try and see if he can steal some of this kill from his dad. But that's not going to happen because dad is very strong and very big, and he's not going to want to let his son come anywhere near his kill. He's going to chase his son away, and he's going to keep that food for himself and keep his son at bay. The problem is, is both of these leopards need a good meal. Dad is getting very old and he's been a little bit sick lately and so he needs a lot of food to try and get himself better. And son, well son is a young male that's been left by his mother recently and is trying to work out how to become a big strong leopard and that means that he's having a lot of time trying to hunt but he's still learning how to hunt and so it's not very good. And so both of them are a little bit skinny and this meal is something that they both need and we need both of them to actually feed off it. So it'll be interesting to see if dad does let him feed at some stage. I don't think so though. Jen Generally, a big male leopard won't let anyone near their carcass or their kill, and they won't let anybody else feed on their meal at all. Now, what you'll find, though, is that this male has dragged this meat into this area because it's nice and thick and dense. It's the perfect place to hide a kill away from hyenas and vultures and other or lions. And then, if any of those do come, he's able to then grab it and take it up into all the trees that are close by. There's a really nice big tree to our right, so that tree there, he can take the carcass and pull it up into the tree and get it out of the way of hyenas and various other things. So it's a really good place for him to be. Now what I want to try and do is I'm just going to try and move a little bit because I want to try and see if we can get a view of both of the leopards for you and try and see if we can get a view of his face and not just the back of his head. And so what I'm going to do is try and go back a little bit and go around onto this other side. But this is all very, very exciting. And like I say, you're being spoiled. To see one leopard is very special. To see two leopards is incredibly special. So we're going to try and just get back a little bit. We've just got to be careful of our heads because there's a very sharp, thorny tree right on my right-hand side. So I don't want to cut myself with that thorny tree. Am I okay there, Ferg? So I'm going to just go back a little bit. And then what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and get in on this side where hopefully I can show you both of these leopards together. Now remember, you must ask lots and lots of questions. I haven't heard any questions coming through, so remember to keep your questions coming and keep sending them to your teacher, and then she'll send them all towards where I am, and hopefully we'll then be able to talk to you guys. Now, Fergus, I'm going to try and squeeze in here. I think we can squeeze in here, and maybe we can get a really nice view. Let's see. How am I doing there, Ferg? Can you see that male? Okay, good. So Fergus can see that male over there. I can't see where the young male is. He's behind somewhere in that thicket and is kind of just sitting waiting for dad to move. So Josiah and Macy, a leopard's can normally run at about 35 miles an hour. So it's not the fastest of the big cats. We get other big cats that are much faster. So things like cheetah and, and lions, they run faster than a leopard. But what a leopard is very good at is being a ambush predator. Now, when I say ambush, what that means is it's a predator that likes to sit in the long grass or in places where it's very thick and lots of trees and bushes and it has a very specialized coat. So it has hair that is colored in the right way to make it look invisible to the prey animals and so leopards get into places like this and then they wait for the prey so in this case a little water buck to come very close and then they have a quick 
run out and they grab it and then they're able to pull it down. And so a leopard is not designed to run very fast because it doesn't normally have to run very far. It doesn't have to cover distance to get to its prey. It normally hunts from very close and so it's built to be very powerful and very strong so that you can bring down the prey quickly and then take it up into the trees out of the way of other predators. So they're a little bit different to cheetahs, not very fast at all. So they run at about 30, 35 miles an hour when at full speed. But very seldom do leopards actually get that fast because generally they have a situation where they don't need to because they're running very short distance and so it's an explosive little run forward to grab the calf. Right, I'm going to sit here and enjoy these leopards a little bit longer because we're going to have to give some of the other guys that are out in this area a chance to come see them. But while I sit with these guys, let's send you over to my good friend Ali, who's not in a vehicle. She's out on foot and she's with a really big animal. I do indeed, but our beautiful leopards are having a really good sleep. And that's because that beautiful leopard has a massive round tummy. And it's because he's eaten a lot of that water buck. So even though he was skinny before this, he's now got a huge tummy. And so hopefully that's going to help him start to get nice and big and strong again. Like I say, he was feeling a little bit sick for the last few weeks. And so it's good that he's found himself some food. Maybe this is now going to help him get back into it and start to really become a lot more stronger and we need him to be stronger because at the moment the leopards are kind of in a bit of a different situation we're in a place where a lot of our leopards have changed where they like to to move around and that's because we have a new male leopard around and he's come in because this male has been a bit sick and under the weather and means that the other male he has come in to try and find some females and to try and find some mommies. And the mommies, because they've got little babies, they don't want to be around that male because he, that dad, he might hurt those babies. And so he, they've taken them away. And so at the moment, we don't have very many leopards around and we need this male to get up and to come and start to try and chase that other dad leopard away and keep him out of the area. Timely leopards hide very well. If you can see there, you see what the color of their coat is and that they've got little black spots on them. So those black spots are called rosettes. And what those do is they help to break the outline of this leopard up and it makes it very difficult to see the leopard behind all of the grasses and the trees and the leopards know this so they'll try and find areas where it's nice and shady and dark and where they can get in and those rosettes can help break up the outline and make it very difficult for anything to see them so that's how they hide is that they use the all the thick grasses and and tree areas and those spots just help blend in and make it very difficult you can see there is a second leopard that is here but we can't see it at all because of the way that it camouflages and the way that it can hide away even though there are two leopards we can only see one because the bush is so thick and the leopard's coat is so perfectly suited that it's going to be very difficult for us to see the other one once he gets behind some grass and some bushes and even this leopard if I had to drive back two meters you'd find it would be very difficult to see this leopard because of its color Raylan, this leopard is breathing fast while sleeping, not because it's normal for it. It's breathing that fast because it's very full. So what happens with the leopard is they eat as much as they can, as quickly as they can, because they know that things like hyenas are around and they might lose their kill. So they eat a lot. And what that does is it means the, the tummy expands and it gets bigger. And the tummy gets really, really big. And that then pushes up on their lungs. And so... What If you have ever had a situation where you're trying to breathe and someone sits on your tummy, you'll find it's very difficult to breathe. It's not as easy to breathe. And so it's the same thing here. All the meat is pushing up on the lungs, and so the lungs can't get big enough to get lots of air in, and so they have to breathe a little bit faster to try and get the air out. The other thing is that because he's eaten a lot, he's very hot. And so what's happening is that heat that is in his body he's got to try and cool himself down and so how he cools himself down is by breathing very fast with his mouth open and he has water on his tongue or saliva and he, that on his tongue as he breathes the hot air causes that water to evaporate now evaporate basically means it turns from water into a gas and so as that happens it cools the blood in the tongue and sends the cooler blood back into the body and that's what helps cool him down and make him comfortable in the hot african sun right now our we'll try and see if we can get a view of the second leopard but then we're going to have to try and make some space for some of the others to come and have a little look and so while we do that let's send you across to ali who's got a beautiful view 
of this African sunset. We do. The sun is definitely starting to come down, but we thought we would show you one of the things that elephants love the most in their entire life, and it's this. This is the fruit of one of the trees that we get in this area called marula, and they absolutely love it. Now, you see the tree, actually, we might be in the firing zone because they're all falling from up here, and I wouldn't be surprised if I actually get one in my head. Now... I think we're going to have to move from here as there's something approaching. There is something, I think, maybe an owl. And it's the reason why all of these birds were going crazy. Now, I can't see it from here, but it seems like Herbie, who's one of the people that's here on the walk with us, he's managed to see it. <gasps> what an exciting walk this has been. Every time we think we find something, we get fully interrupted. Now, I can't see it entirely, but if you hear the birds going tick, 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 they make that call, and it's almost like they're screaming, danger, 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 because there's something here that they don't like. Now, what they don't like, oh, those were some elephants going grumpy, that's not why the birds are upset. All right, seems like everyone's growling, let's head back to the leopards, who are also a little bit grumpy. Well, Dad has just gotten up and is growling at his son because his son was coming from the background there. And so Dad saw him. You see, look, he's growling. You see how he's lifting his lips and showing his teeth? So he's telling his son, don't you come any closer. This is my meal. It's not yours. And that's why he's growling at him. And he's making sure that his son knows not to come any further because otherwise he's going to have to chase his son away. So that will be a very good way to try and tell the other leopard don't come anywhere without actually having to fight because if they fight then they can get badly injured and so it's better to try and show teeth and to growl and to make a lot of noise and then try and keep the other leopard away so that both of them don't get hurt they don't want to kill each other they just want a situation where they try and keep each other kind of apart now look you see he's starting to eat now so i think the other leopard might move away a little bit but this one is going to start feeding on this carcass and trying to see if it can get some meat out of this water buck. I wonder if it's maybe going to take it up into the tree. He was looking in the tree. Colton, you're wondering about leopards and cheetahs and why they eat meat. Well, Colton, because everything out here has to have a balance. And what that means is that everything has to be equal. And so if we had all the animals only eating grass and leaves and those kind of things there would be way 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 too many of those animals and they would eat everything and there would be no more grass and no more trees and the whole system would die because there wouldn't be food for those animals so what you need is you need animals that eat meat and hunt the other animals that eat grasses so that it all stays in a nice balance and so these guys have to hunt some of the prey animals in order to try and You see, look, the leopard is dragging the carcass in front of us at the moment. I thought he was going to go up the tree that's right here, but he's decided to keep dragging. Maybe he's going to take it to the tree on our right-hand side. That's exactly where he's going. So we're going to get to see how strong a leopard is. Look how he's dragging that animal. It's supreme power in his shoulders, and he's really getting nice and big, and I think he's going to go up the tree for us, which is going to be so, so cool. The sun has just come in front of us as well, so we're going to see the sun pretty shortly too. He's just stopped in front. Now, this male might take a little break first. He's just going to rest a little bit, try and get his strength back before he takes that animal up into the tree because that animal is very heavy. It's not light, and so it's difficult for this big male to be able to take it up. But before he goes up, I wonder if he's just also just taking a little look around, just checking that there's nothing that's going to come anywhere towards him and to chase him away. I want to try and just go back a little bit for you, Ferg. His son is kind of creeping in in front of me and is just trying to get, so I can't actually start because his son is so close to where I am at the moment. So he's very, very, very close, and I'm sure he's going to come up. If this male goes into the tree, then he's definitely going to try and come up. Raisin, a leopard is a fierce predator. Look, look, listen. Can you hear him growling? So, Raisin, they are fierce predators because they have to be there. That's how they survive. They're not doing it because they like to kill for fun. They're doing it 
because that's how they have to be able to get food and to be able to survive out here and to be able to live for a long time is that they have to hunt lots of different animals and so they have to be fierce predators to be able to get the food that they need to survive but it's, it's very cool let's see if he's going to go up the tree i think he might go up the tree i want to just go back a little bit ferg i'm going to go Do this carefully because I've got a very big stump on my side. Okay, there we go. So I apologize if our signal broke a little bit. It's because we are in a deep thicket, and so sometimes it gets a little bit difficult to see but all the way to you guys on the other side of the world. But you see, he's still just stopping. I wonder if he's going to jump up. The other leopard is just sitting, waiting for this one to go up. I think he's scared to go too close to Dad because Dad is making lots and lots of noise and is going to certainly be quite scary. But let's see how this goes. It's very cool to see. It's very special to see a leopard climb a tree with a kill. It's not every day that you get to see it. They only do it, you know, if they've got a kill, they only do it once. They take it up and then they feed off it, and that's the end of it. So to see it is a very special thing, and it's something that looks like he might pick it up. So he's still standing over it, and I think he doesn't want to leave it because he's worried about the other leopard that's just in front of our car. Let's see how he's going to go. And he's still just catching his breath a little bit. He's definitely looking up into the, the tree, and so I'm pretty sure he's eventually going to get up in there at some point. Amazing when they do it though, like I say, to, to carry a carcass, imagine this, imagine trying to climb a tree, and I know some of you probably do try to climb trees and jungle gyms and all those kind of things, imagine doing that with your friend on your back that weighs the same as you, so you find a friend that weighs the same as what you do, put him on your back and try and climb, and that's how strong a leopard is, a leopard can pick up things that weigh very similar to what they do, and they take them against gravity by their mouth, so imagine trying to pick up your friend with your teeth and take it into the tree, okay, here we go, he's going to go up, here we go. Look at that. You see how he just pulls himself up? Now oh, he's on the other side of the tree, but he'll go all the way soon. He's going to take it probably where he can hang it in the fork of the tree. So there he goes. Look. Look at him going. You see how he uses his claws and the strong, powerful legs. How cool is that? You guys are being spoiled. The leopard is really putting on a very big show for you. Now he's put it up in the tree. It's going to be safe from things like hyenas and also from things like lions so he's put it in a really good place and that means he's going to be able to eat it for quite some time so well done to our leopard that's a very very good thing that he's done there and it's going to make him definitely be able to keep this kill for much longer than he would have if it had stayed on the ground and that's why leopards do this is because they want to be able to keep their kill for longer periods of time and they don't want to lose it to leopards. Now, you'll hear some other cars in the background. These other cars are, are people that are here in South Africa busy looking at these animals. So, Janaya, are you asking about leopards and how they are similar to jaguars? Well, a leopard and a jaguar, they come from the same section of big cats called panthera. So, basically, you get a family called panthera. The cat that you see at home, a domestic cat, is part of a cat family called felines or felidae, and so they are the small cats. But big cats like this, they have a very different um, system to what the, the small cats do. They have a very different voice box area, and they're able to roar rather than purr. And the reason why they can't purr is because they've got very thickened vocal pads that clamp down on their, on their voice, and that means that they have a situation where they basically don't have the ability to vibrate the muscle, so to move the muscle quick enough to purr. And they can only make a very big roaring sound, like a lion's roar or a leopard soars. And so that's where they're very similar. Also, jaguars have rosettes, like what you see on this leopard. And they are cats that appear very similar, long tail, and they've got kind of the same look about them, strong, powerful cats. But jaguars don't climb nearly as much as what leopards do. Leopards are animals that climb a lot more than jaguars. And jaguars live in South America, whereas leopards are here in South Africa, or in Africa in general, and a little bit into Asia and India. But you don't get them in South America at all. Very cool to see. Now, our 
leopard's probably going to find a little spot to rest. It's probably quite tired after dragging that carcass up into the tree, so I wouldn't be, be surprised if he starts to sleep. And so while we see what he does and his son does, let's send you back across to Byron, who is bumbling around. Well, our leopard is still in the tree and still sitting. You can see he's growling every now and then at his son who's lying right in front of our vehicle at the moment. And so he's just taking it very, very, very easy up in the tree and telling his son, don't come up here, this is my kill. And I'm pretty sure he's going to get to a point where he's going to lie in the tree. He'll find a nice, comfortable branch where he can go and rest like he's on a couch. So that's what he's probably going to try and do fairly soon. At the moment, he's just resting a little bit and looking around, checking what's going on and admiring the work that he's done in able to get it up into the tree. Now, hopefully he doesn't fall. <laughs> where are you going, boy? Are you going to sleep on your carcass? Holden, leopards climb very fast because they have very big, strong, powerful front legs that have got huge muscles on them. They're a little bit like Byron. They've got very big muscles on their front legs and arms, and that helps them to climb. They've also got sharp claws that dig into the trees, and they're able to then grab the tree and pull up into the tree. We're using those claws, and the claws act like hooks. And so if you've ever watched some of the movies, they use hooks to try and grab onto things, and then if they have strong muscles, pull them up into the tree, and that's how they do it. Because remember, also, leopards are very fit. It's like they go to gym every day because they climb up and down trees all the time, and they move around a lot, and so it's like going to the gym. They kind of work out quite a lot to keep themselves nice and strong, and going up and down these trees and dragging themselves and carcasses helps to keep them fit and strong like that. But I'm sure he's going to lie down at some point. I think he's just looking around for a little bit and just seeing what's happening around him. There's probably lots of other animals moving about in the big open area. We're right next to a large dam, and so a lot of animals come here for water in the afternoon. So maybe he's seen some other antelope. Maybe the mother of this little baby waterbuck is somewhere close by. Sometimes the mom will stay very close trying to see if it can find its little baby and hope that the baby got away from the leopard. But we know, unfortunately, that this little baby got killed. So mom might still be around, and that's what he might be watching. He's also, I think, trying to see if he can maybe feed a little bit off it while sitting. You see he's trying to eat a little bit there. Are you going to take it further, boy? I'm surprised he's taking it further because where he had it was a really nice place. It was the perfect place to leave it because it had a nice fork. And when there's a fork of a tree, a fork is always much better because it holds the water buck a lot better. He's going very far into the tree. Why are you going so far? Uh, I think he wants to put it there because he can lie down there and eat. You see that branch is a lot straighter and so he can actually sit on the branch and put his legs down and probably eat there a lot easier than if he was on the other one. But it's quite far out into the tree. I'm surprised that he went there. He should have actually gone to the tree that was closer. It would have been much easier for him to climb. Now sometimes what leopards do is they do this and they take it a little too far up into the tree and then it drops and then they have to go down and fetch it and take it up into the tree again. But I think that's where he wants to put it is he wants to just put it up on that horizontal branch where he can lie down and be comfortable. Very cool. Now I wonder where his son is. His son I think is still lying in front of me. So I'm going to try and see if I can find a better view so that we can see the sun because we've seen a lot of the dad. And so while I do that, let's send you back across to Ali who's found another large elephant on foot. I do indeed. So we've got a nice view of the sun now and you can see, look, he's just looking up with these big eyes at dad as if to say, come on dad, I'm hungry. Please let me have a little bit of food. So these big, beautiful green eyes that he's got. He's probably one of the most beautiful leopards that we have in this whole area. He's an absolutely really good looking cat and he keeps kind of watching his dad because his dad is moving about eating and those are eyes that are eyes of a leopard that wants a little bit of that food and wants to see a little bit drop that he can maybe come in and grab some. So there's some stuff dropping. The other leopard is eating and things are falling off. I wonder what's dropping from there. It looks like maybe he's opened the tummy and there's a bit of food dropping from the tree itself. Actually, no. Don't worry. Forget that. He's not doing that. He's busy. <laughs> 
Uh, our other leopard is taking a poo in the tree. That's what's happening. So he's busy dropping whole bunches of dung, which is glad that we're not under that tree because otherwise we would have been getting leopard poo on our heads and no one wants leopard poo on their heads. It would have been a very uncomfortable experience and leopard poo really smells very, very badly. So it would have been horrible. But you can see, I think even the sun is a bit grossed out by the fact that dad just did that and is kind of just watching. I think he was hoping it would have been rather meat that came out, but instead it wasn't that. So not very pleasant at all, but the way it goes. Anyway, it's that time, I'm afraid, guys, where you guys have to carry on. So you guys can send through your questions. Remember, hashtag Safari Live on Twitter or YouTube chat. Now, for those that are a bit more of our adult audience, if you didn't catch what just happened, we were watching Tumba, but Tingana just took a massive poo out of the tree. It's the first time I've ever seen a leopard poo out of a tree like that when there's no other lions or anything keeping it up in a tree. This is the absolute first time that I've ever seen it. And he literally just squatted and just kind of dropped an entire load onto the ground, which is fantastic. It is absolutely wonderful to see. And it is amazing that Tumba kind of just watched what's going on. So there's going to be a vehicle that's going to start now. The other guys are going to go. So do you want me to go forward a bit, Ryan? Okay, so we were going to make space for Ryan, but he says he's okay and he can carry on going, and so he's going to come past us fairly shortly and get out. Hopefully his car can grip in the sand because he was battling a bit earlier. Thanks, Ryan. And so now we have these two leopards all to ourselves, from being almost pushed out of the sighting to having the situation where we have them all to ourselves. But let's try and reposition a little bit so we can see both cats because it really is just spectacular. When is it that you can get two male leopards with a kill in a tree all to yourself. It's very seldom in life that these things happen and so we're very fortunate that we're able to be able to do this and little Tumba, who is my absolute favorite, is sitting patiently longing for some bit of meat to come his way and at the moment I don't think he's going to get anything so poor boy is going to have to just sit and watch what's going on and just see dad eating and unfortunately being very patient. Whether or not he's going to get it right, I'm not quite sure. He's maybe going to be, get a leg falling down or something like that and get lucky. What I can tell you though is that whatever came out of Tingana has a real pungent smell and I'm very glad that we moved because it was quite close to where we were going and so if that had landed on our heads we would have not been in good state at all. In fact, I think there would have been a lot of mock charges and gag reflexes going on on the back of the vehicle. But very, very funny to see. Like I say, I never in my life seen a leopard do that before, but it was quite hilarious. Anyway, good. We're going to watch these two beautiful creatures. And while we do that, let's send you back across to Ali, who's giving a tree a hug on her way home. Well, Ali, I'm glad that you're getting home safely because it's getting rather dark. Tingana, where are you going? Because you are going to get to a situation where you're going to go somewhere where you're going to fall out of that tree. The branches are creaking under the weight of his belly and this water buck. And I don't know why he's taking it so deep in there. It's not like Tumba is posing much of a threat or even trying to get up there. And where it was was absolutely perfect. There goes Tumba. Tumba's actually up and moving. Look, I think Tumba senses that maybe, just maybe, this might fall, so I'm going to just turn my light off there because it's very bright. Sorry, Fergus, that was my fault, and see what's going on. But he's just creeping down forward in case that kill drops. I wonder if Tumba would be brazen enough to run in and grab it and try run away from Tingana. It would be amazing to actually see if that did happen, and knowing this sighting, anything could have happened. Now, Kristen, no chuffing from Tumba whatsoever. I would imagine that would have happened way earlier when he first arrived with Tingana. I don't think we would have had a situation where he'll chuff now. Tingana knows he's here. He knows Tingana's there, and so no need to chuff just yet. Um, but there's been nothing that I can speak of. And, and like I say, I wonder if Tingana drops it. Will Tumba be brazen enough to actually try and steal it? You can also see now why leopards can sometimes be really hard to spot. There is a leopard somewhere in there. And imagine driving along here. You wouldn't notice that at all if he was lying up in the tree. You could very easily drive past this leopard, no problem. Now, also, I think that there definitely is not a third leopard in this area. I mean, we've sat here for long enough. There's been dragging up into trees and moving of carcasses. And so I would imagine if there was a third leopard, we would have seen it on the scene. I think people just got confused between the two of them and thought maybe there was a third one here, but it's actually just the two of them at the moment. Very cool to see though. You can see that little belly pulsing in behind the leaves. Tingana, I don't think you can go any further without falling out of that tree because the branches are starting to get very, very small indeed. Now I want to see where Tumba's gone. I'm just going to reposition quickly just to see where little Tumba is. We'll just try and 
pick him up over here. Whew, that smell is really quite something. It gets up the nostril a little bit. Tingana, you're obviously not a well boy at the moment. Maybe it's that monitor lizard that's coming out at the, this stage. Okay, so Tumba has hidden himself behind a bush. Tingana is directly above us at the moment. I'm going to try and just give us a little bit of light and see if we can maybe give Ferg something to work with. But there's Tumba. I thought he was going to come all the way through onto this open clearing, but he's not. Tingana is still sitting very kind of astutely up in the tree. He's looking to the north the whole time. Since we've been here, all he's been doing is staring northwards. He's hardly looked at Tumba. So maybe there's a third leopard. Maybe a third leopard is moving to the north of us, and that's why he keeps looking in that direction. But the view of him is almost zero. Tumba's hidden behind a tree. So leopards are proving to be masters of their art in terms of being reclusive, shy, and hiding behind vegetation. <coughs> Excuse me, I just swallowed a fly. <coughs> Sorry about that. <coughs> but while I try and get rid of the fly that just came in, yeah, and that fly has probably been sitting on Tingana's poo. Let's not even think about that. That's horrific. So while I try to eject the fly out of my mouth, let's send you back across to Byron and see what he's up to. Ha, ha, ha. Byron, you're such a funny guy. I don't know how I can cope with your funniness this afternoon. Now, it's okay. Those who make fun, as we've learnt, and as I've learnt especially, get revenge in the most harshest way. So I can foresee a massive dung beetle that's been playing around in a nice marula-filled dung ball, flying straight into Byron's mouth this evening while he's busy cackling away at my misfortune. That's what's going to happen. So be careful, Byron. Karma will get you. It certainly got me a few weeks ago, or months ago when I was making fun of Taylor, and I ended up falling out of a car. So you need to be a little careful. But not much has changed since you were last with us. Tingana's still standing, still looking north. Tumba still lying, patiently hoping and waiting to try and get some semblance of this meal. Now, it's getting very, very dark, so we're going to try and see if we can put our infrared lights on shortly, and hopefully we'll then be able to actually see things a little bit better. I'm also trying to work out if maybe there's a better place that I can park in order to be able to see these two leopards a lot better than what we're seeing them right now, because currently it is really not very easy to see either of them, and they're almost disappearing in the darkness that is enveloping us at the moment. So I'm hoping that we'll have a situation where one of them just kind of moves a little bit, and while Tingana is still standing, I wanted to try and just think about where I was going to go. If he can just sit down, then I know that he's going to spend some time there, but for some reason, he's just adamant in staring north. He has not stopped facing the northerly direction the entire time we've been sitting here. And I wonder if maybe something is moving on that northern side that he's just keeping a really close eye on. You never know. Hosanna could be here. Quarantine could be around. Tandi, Kuchava. There's a number of different leopards that are hanging around on this eastern side at the moment. And maybe that's what he's watching so intently because he hasn't paid a single notice or bit of notice to... Tumba the whole time he's been up in that position. He's just staring straight north up the drainage line and looking up northwards towards the sort of tortured boundary. So I'm interested to see what's coming from that side and why he's so fixated. Like I say, maybe there's another antelope that's up there. I'm not quite sure. Ooh, Justin. Yeah, this is an interesting one. You're asking, what is the absolute worst smell I've ever smelt in the bush? Hmm. Um, Justin, I think there's two things that I, that really stick out in my mind. There was a dead elephant on the northern side of Chippewa Airstrip, right across from where my room was when I worked at Chippewa. And that elephant attracted a lot of different things. And unfortunately, over the course of a month, it rotted itself into a putrid mess of liquid. And while that was happening, a hyena wandered in, and the Majingalans were, happened to be there that night and killed hyena. And so the combination of a dead, rotting hyena mixed with a dead, rotting elephant was just the likes of none that I can even describe to you. It just got into your nose. It almost felt like it singed your nostrils as it went in. And the smell of opening your door, beautiful, bright morning, and you'd open your door, and that crisp, clean winter air was just this soggy, horrible smell of putrid elephant and hyena it was horrific so that's one time that i remember very clearly being completely grossed out by nature the other time 
was when I had an experience of a Solala lion that was at the time when we had the, the drought and the buffalo were falling over all over the place. And a male lion who was feeding off these dead buffalo and had fed off a particularly ripe one was walking around and he went to the toilet. And what came out, I cannot even describe to you what it looked like. It was just a mess of liquid that came out of him, followed by three long tapeworms that I can only imagine were tapeworms. They might have been another type of worm, but each worm was over a meter long. And those worms hung from his behind, and he began to scrape his behind. And the more he scraped, the more the smell just permeated the air. And I can promise you, it was horrific. It was one of the most disgusting things I've ever smelt, and so it really put me off. In fact, for a while, I couldn't even look at spaghetti, because it just reminded me of spaghetti with kind of like a bolognese sauce. It was just, oh, it was horrific. And so those two smells will forever be etched in my memory as smells that are just something that I would never want to actually have to sort of pick up in my nose ever again. Now, I'm not sure... What's wrong, Fig? Ah, the light. So, Fig, I'm going to try and put the light, but the problem with the light is that the tire being strapped to it means that it doesn't move very much. So there we go. There's a bit of light. We're going to put our IR lights on. And while we do that, let's send you across to Byron and find out whether that dung beetle has hit him in the face yet or what his most awful smell has been. Byron, I, I'm a bit worried. Are you sniffing me secretly? I... You walk, sometimes Byron will walk up to you when you're at dinner and he'll just kind of sniff your hair. You can ask Kirsty, he does it to all of us sometimes. It's a bit creepy, but we deal with it because he's a funny guy and so, you know, it's how it goes. No, I'm just kidding. He doesn't do that at all. We're just making light of what's going on. But Tingana, still standing, still looking in the opposite direction. What is intriguing him so much in that area? I have absolutely no idea. He's been standing like that now for well over 20 minutes, just staring straight north the whole time. And there's nothing that we can see. We can't. We checked up the drainage a bit. Nothing really there. I shone and checked. Ah, oh, there we go. Finally. Hello, boy. You really are looking a lot better. It's amazing what a good meal can do, or a couple good meals can do. Look at the size of that tummy. That's a familiar Tingana pose, isn't it? Legs over the branch, big fat tummy hanging down, and him kind of just sitting in a tree panting away with a full tummy. That's the Tingana that we all kind of hope to see. His face even looks a lot better, doesn't it? It doesn't look as though he's as aged today and is as tired. He looks as though he's got a bit more kind of life in him in some ways. You can kind of see there's that... I don't know. There's something about him that just looks like he's coming back into better shape than what he was. He's definitely put a lot more muscle on around his hips and his shoulders. And the fact that he's made a kill of a baby water buck pretty much means that he must be pretty close to being back to feeling his normal self, which is great, great news for all of us, because hopefully that means he's going to start pushing back the intruding males that have kind of come in, or intruding male, should I say. Also, I'm so glad that he's still very tolerant of Tumba. The fact that he's not giving Tumba any problem while sitting up there. I mean, he's an odd growl here and there, but for the most part, he's been a very civil gentleman to Tumba. And Tumba, well, he's just having a little sleep in the same place. He hasn't moved much at all. But isn't that very cool? I think we have been spoiled this afternoon. So having a bit of a leopard drought has definitely been kind of worth it if we're going to get these kind of sightings. The other good part about this is that we know Tingana will be around tomorrow morning for sure. I mean, he's going to eat most of that, and he'll probably be a big sausage tomorrow morning, but that's okay. We'd rather him be a sausage than a little skinny skewer. Diaz, the, you're asking about the, the Tingana tree, Birmingham boy stealing sighting. Well, there's two different ones that you might be thinking of, and neither of them were actually where we are right now. Both of them were not far from here, but they weren't exactly here in this specific spot. So they were on Chippewa Airstrip, which is south of where we are, on the other side of the camp. We're right near the last room. In fact, these leopards from the last room, you can see them from the deck, which is pretty cool. So those guests that are staying in that area are going to have a wonderful time of it as they're able to watch leopards all night if they've got a light but basically the one kill well the one sighting was when he had two impala kills in the tree off the airstrip and the birmingham boys went up and, and took them out and they left little scraps there that eventually hosana tumba and tingana all came back to a few days later so that's the one sighting the other sighting was a few days ago where he had an impala up in a tree and the Birmingham boy was there, but we don't think that the Birmingham boy actually eventually got to the carcass because the next day, 
Tingana was still there. There was bits of the carcass down on the ground, and Tingana was feeding off it, and it looked like he had a little bit of a swell in his tummy. So I think Tingana got most of that kill, and he managed to keep it away from the Birminghams. The tree was quite slippery. It had been raining, and it was also in an awkward place for a lion to get to, much like this carcass here. And maybe that's why Tingana's dragged it as far up into the tree as he did. He knows that these lions are roaming about and that they could potentially climb a tree, and so taking it deep into the, the really thin branches is probably the best bet. Hey, Tumba, are you listening to our stories? Are you a tired boy? I'm not surprised you're tired. You've walked a lot today, boy. He's come all the way from Torchwood all the way to here in the space of the day, and it's been a warm day today, so I'm not surprised you're tired. I hope you get a leg of this meal. You can't say no to a face like that. Look at the ears and the little eyes and the way he was kind of looking up at Tingana a bit earlier. You kind of feel sorry for him, and you hope that he will get a little bit of this meal at some point. But for now, unfortunately... It's all up to Dad and, and Dad eating. Right, now I'm going to sit and enjoy Tumba and Tingana for a while longer because why not? We'll stay here until the end of drive. But in the meantime, let's send you back to Byron, who I believe has had justice served and has just been hit in the face by a bug. Indeed, we have been spoiled this afternoon, but Byron sounds like you've had a wonderful afternoon too, and I know Byron loves Ellie, so he was spoiled in the beginning of Drive, that's for sure. Luckily, elephants are quite big, because otherwise maybe Byron would have missed those too. Now, Byron, I remember last time that you were with us that you had a very spiffy pair of new glasses, and I'm wondering what's happened to those spiffy glasses. Did you ditch them? Did you break them? Did you lose them? Or why are you not wearing them? Because evidently... We maybe need to revisit the glasses situation and possibly try and get you sorted out with another pair that you can actually not be seeing random things and also not being hit in the eye by bugs. I'll come up with a solution if you can come up with a solution for me. I suppose me just not talking would be a good solution, which I'm sure some people would thoroughly enjoy more than others. Anyway, it's been a good afternoon. We've enough of giving each other trouble. And it's all in jest, just by the way. We're not being serious. Dina, did you hear a fiery neck nightjar? Lovely, that's excellent. So Dina says she heard a fiery neck nightjar in the background. It's obviously quite tough for me to know what you guys can hear. There's, there's all kinds of different animals that call in these areas. And so uh, the fiery neck nightjar is one of the sounds that is synonymous with a safari in the evenings. And, and so anybody that's been out here will, will know that sound particularly well and will really have a, have a kind of appreciation for it. Now... I haven't had a chance to go look for our pennant wing nightjar because, well, we got a bit stuck with the spots today, but tomorrow afternoon is going to be my day to go look for that pennant wing nightjar. You've now reminded me, Dina. Of course, if spots come out, I might change my mind. We know how I am a bit fickle with that, and I have squirrel syndrome of note, particularly when it comes to leopard. But this has just been such a cool sighting. I've thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed every minute of spending time with these two boys, and, and it's ended so nicely for us in that they've come right out. We're sitting here. Not a single other car has joined us for a while. And to sit with these two leopards in amongst them and just sit quietly and listen to the sounds. Here at Tingana every now and give a little grunt and a growl. Tumbo is just sleeping nicely right next to our car. He's within five meters of us. It's just been the most. I think the school kids got thoroughly spoiled as well. They got the best of the sighting and so i'm uh, sorry that we lost the picture a little bit it's, it seems as though where we're sitting right now every now and then there's a little bit of intermittent signal it's probably because of all the trees that are around us we're right in the thickets it is uh, that a time of the day unfortunately where we are going to start having to head back home and starting to head back towards camp so it's been an absolutely wonderful afternoon like i say i hope that you've all enjoyed it and really had a good time with all of us but we're going to leave you with a view of tingana to finish and so from kirsty and final control byron and ali and myself and all the cam ops it's been an absolute pleasure and like i say we'll see you tomorrow morning on hopefully another sunny sunrise safari